Hello, thanks for joining me today. We are gonna get started on some, a little guided drawing. So what you need is a pencil, um, and then I'm gonna use a little felt tip marker. It's gonna be any kind of marker. And then I have a square of paper here. Uh, the Zentangle method has these little tiles, <laughs> but you can use a square of paper. You can use a larger piece of paper and just draw your own little square on there. The first thing I'm gonna do is put four little dots in the corner of my paper. And these are gonna help me define where my design is gonna go. And at any time, if you need to turn your paper, please do. So there's my four dots. And I'm gonna make a fun little curvy border on the edge. These lines can be straight if you prefer kind of straight edges, but I like the swooshy curvy ones. And I'm always keeping my paper where my hand is comfortable drawing. So now we have this. And this square has some gunk on it, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I'll, I'll design over that. And now that you've still got your pencil, I want you to find roughly the center and make sort of a circle in here. There you go. And then inside of that circle, we'll make another circle. So these are just our general lines. And now we're going straight into marker, my friends. Uh, the Zentangle method kind of teaches us that we, there aren't a lot of mistakes. So we're gonna not worry about mistakes happening. Okay, first let's trace around this larger outer circle. You can see mine is not perfect but I'm not worrying about that. All right, now we're gonna come down kind of like we're gonna make a nine. And I'm gonna end it right there. And then I'm gonna turn my paper a little bit and I'm gonna do the same thing. But I want you to watch when I make this piece of the nine it's gonna come out of where we met, this one. And I'm gonna go down toward the corner, but when I hit that edge, I'm gonna come over. So I have this little curl here. And then when I make the thicker part, I'm gonna come over and just make that a fun little floof. And if yours looks different, please don't worry. It can look completely different and this will still be successful. We are going to continue doing this from the last place. So I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna hit here, come around. And then we can also just make this rounded like that. So there's a lot of different ways to make that little ball on the end, but we'll keep rotating and we'll start wherever we had that last one. And I'm gonna come around and make this little edge. And then I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna come around and then I'll just close that in. It's almost like it's a little comma or an apostrophe, but I'm gonna keep turning my paper so that as I come down to make this nine, that was kind of not my best ever, but here we are. I'm gonna come around. I'm gonna finish it out. And I'm gonna keep doing this until I feel like I have enough. All right, so here's what I have so far. Let's see, do we feel like we could fit one more? Maybe, it's up to you. If you feel like you can fit one more down here, you can do that. All right. The next set of these that we do is kind of gonna be behind 
right? But it's gonna maybe go the other way. <coughs> wow, excuse me. So, get your first ones in there, get them set. And then we will start going the other way. And this might be slightly more confusing, but now it's like, um, so let's find a nice open place, but it's gonna be like you're making a six instead. <laughs> so I'm gonna come up and anywhere I hit a place that I've already got a line drawn, I'm just gonna pick up. But this is like I'm making a little six. And then we'll do this line. Same thing where we pick up. And we're gonna be adding some lines going the other way. So I'm gonna rotate. And wherever I feel like I wanna make another six, I can. So I'm coming up, this one's going the other way. And I'm gonna rotate a little bit and I'm gonna add another one wherever I feel like it will work well for me. And they don't have to be the same size. Some can be bigger, some can be smaller. They can be skinnier at the bottom, fatter at the bottom. But over here, I feel like I can make one go up and around. So I'm just picking up any time I hit a line that I've already drawn. And then I'm gonna rotate a little bit and go up this way and make another one and then add the second piece to it. And however many you wanna put in here, whatever is bringing you the most joy, whatever is fun for you to do, however big you want to make them. Some of them can be really huge. That's fine. So I'm just going to continue rotating until I feel like I've put however many in I need in there. And I think I've kind of made it all the way around. So now you might have some open spaces and you can put even more of these little fun things in here. So you can kind of go behind. I'm gonna find some spaces. So like I have a space here. So I'm gonna just come around and put a little round part here. And finish it up. So anywhere you've got a space and you want one of those little round things to be in it, you can add it and it's kind of like you're just going behind all of the other ones. Let's see, I also have a nice big space here. So I'm gonna come in, put a round piece and then I'm gonna bring it back down. And let's see, where else do I maybe have a, a larger space? I have a big space <laughs> right here. So I'm gonna come around. This one maybe is gonna be a little more curvy, but this is my art, so I'm in charge of that and I can do that if I want to. So there's that one. And then keep finding any little places you feel like you might want another one. There's one. You can go, <clears throat> you can put in a whole, whole bunch of these, or you can stop if you feel like you've got plenty. I'm going to make this one go that way. And as you add more of these, your hand will get more comfortable making them. At the beginning, you might not have been very comfortable making them, but now you probably are getting the hang of it. Kind of figuring out where you can fit these little shapes in. 
and how they look good. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is play around in the center of this circle a little bit. So let's do, it's not quite fat like um, a donut, but more like maybe, maybe a Cheerio. Okay, and then let's do a square in the middle of that one. Or a rectangle, maybe, maybe it's not a square. Square in the middle of that one. And then in the middle of these, we're just gonna do kind of a diamond. And then I'll tilt it and keep it making a four-sided thing inside of the previous shape until I get to the center and I don't really feel like I can make any more and then I'm just gonna color it in. Now we can decide how to decorate um, what's going on here. I'm gonna draw an inner circle and then on this first one I am gonna make sort of some diagonal stripes. I guess they're a little bit curvy, but they're like curvy or diagonal to the left side. And I'm gonna keep turning my paper. And we'll do that. So these are all going the left way. That's that inner circle. Now on the outer circle, I'm gonna go the other way. So these kind of, did I go the other way? Okay, these are going that way, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna go down. It's almost like making little smiles in each of these, if you can see that. It's almost like a little smile. Wee, that's kind of fun. And if you are a Zentangle Method aficionado, this pattern on the outside is called Spoken. All right, so we've got pattern here, we've got pattern there. This one's colored in. I think I'm just gonna make that whole middle one a shape because I can't, I can't see. And then I'm gonna color in the opposite. Basically, I'm skipping a shape and coloring in every other little layer that I did there. And then I'll skip this one and I'll color in this edge here. So that we have an interesting middle. And you can always do more. Every time you have one of these little patterns, you can always add some other element to it. Oh wow, when did I mess up my nail? Good times. All right. So there we go. And now, so we have this line that we drew around the edge. And if we want to, we can enclose this design. We can add other things to it. We can do some shading. I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and enclose it and I'm gonna go against some of these little shapes that I've drawn here and then sort of follow my line. Wee! Like a little roller coaster. And we can even do fun things like this. Watch this, something sort of wee, unexpected. That's totally fine. That one's gonna kick out. Then I'm gonna come back and go all the way to that edge. Now, 
You can be finished or you don't have to. You can put pattern in each of these. You can add pattern in all of these small spaces. Um, you can color this edge. I think what I'm gonna do is maybe add a few more of these little shapes because I'm finding that I've got a space up here where I can add one. If I have any other big spaces, oh, there's a space right here. I'm just gonna go straight up and add my little shape. Anywhere else you feel like you might want to add a shape. Oh, look, see, like there's a hole right here. Absolutely. And this one's going to come up and around and back down. So you can add those shapes anywhere you want to. You can fill the spaces in with something else. I think I'm going to put one more in right here. And I am just picking up in all the places I've already drawn a line. You can get smaller and smaller and smaller and really have a good time with this. Um, this can be the place where you stop or you can go in and add different little patterns in the interim. A fun pattern to add is just a little, like a little snail. And so you're just ending wherever you end. And then you add another one and they can be any size. They can go any direction. And these are just some little space fillers. And you can keep adding those little snails or you can kind of color in the little interim spaces or you can leave them, whatever is working the best for you. These are all the little tiny personal choices you can make as you're going through it. I'm gonna add another one here and then color in that area. Can get a little confusing because you don't wanna color in the elements that you drew but if you do, I don't think anyone will notice at the end. Just figure out a way to make it work. Figure out a way to make it look good in your design. And you'll be fine. We'll have room for a really big snail right here. So I'm just going to draw that spiral around. And you can put like a little, you can put a little dot at the end of your spirals if you want to give it some extra fun and you could do that in between all of these or just in one section or just a few sections sometimes I get to where my hand is telling me I don't want to draw that small today and that's all right I'm listening to my body I'm doing what's gonna make me relax the most most importantly, I'm breathing. I'm remembering to relax my shoulders. I'm remembering to kind of stretch out my fingers. If I find that I'm gripping this marker too tightly. So you can do little space fillers like that. Um, you can do little space fillers that are squares, triangles, zigzags completely up to you whatever pattern you want to draw because this is your art this time is for you and there is no finish line there's no grade it's not a contest it's absolutely just for you so let's go ahead And fill these in as we want. Another thing you can do if you have to be on hold on the phone or if you do a lot of sitting around waiting for people to come to you 
Maybe sometimes they run a little bit late. You can keep one of these in your work bag, your purse, your school bag, and just pull it out and work on it for a couple minutes at a time till whatever you're waiting for happens. Sometimes when I am waiting for a meeting to begin or I am waiting for someone to pick up the phone on the other end because I'm on hold. I'll just have a little piece out that I can work on kind of for those moments where you don't quite have enough time to really complete an actual task or you don't know how much time you have so you don't want to get started on something and not be able to finish it but this is the perfect thing to be your um, it's kind of your little mind break activity maybe you finish it at the end of the day maybe you finish it at the end of the month maybe you don't ever finish it maybe you're working on it but you lose it that's okay What I find is fun about it is when I'm experiencing a little bit of anxiety or I can't make my mind stop thinking about something. Every time I have to put a new little shape in here, every time I have to think about what's gonna happen in this little space in my silly little abstract art piece makes it harder to think about things that are going on in my day. So it's a nice way to allow my brain to turn off for just a few minutes, refuel, rebuild a little bit of my resilience rebuild a little bit of my creative problem solving ability and then I move forward throughout the day. I don't know how often you need that but I often need that. I think sometimes we feel guilty taking a little bit of time just to do something for us. But I want you to know that you're worth that um, and the people that you're helping or the people that you're interacting with each day, they're also deserving of a you <laughs> that's rested and that is taking care of yourself. Now, sometimes we talk about self-care and that it can feel very low priority. We know in our mind that it's high priority, but it can become low priority because we feel like the other things in life are more important. We feel like other people are depending on us. But if we give ourselves this time and this opportunity to refuel, just this little tiny space, we can approach those people with a little bit more patience, positivity, resilience, self-control, and it's just a better experience for everyone. And the more we take the opportunities for self-care, for finding a little time to refuel our own patience, our own spirit, whatever that means to you, the better our interactions with everyone else will be. And we are gonna send those ripples out into the world. It's gonna be wonderful. All right, so I think I have gotten you started 
on a very lovely piece. You may not finish it today, but you've got something where you're going to go and work on this. And each time you sit down to it, allow your brain to focus only on this. I'm going to go ahead and time lapse the rest of it so you can see my finished product. But I want you to work on it at your very own pace. So you can see I've added some more little spirals. I've still got plenty of space to go. There are other ways you can embellish. If you want to bring out some color, if you've got some colored pencils or um, anything like that, what I like to do in each of these designs is add my Zen Tangle signature, which is called a chop. And the one that I made up is just a little circle and it's got a K in it for Casey. And then I like to add a heart right in this section. And sometimes I color in that heart if I want to. So since this will be a very colored in pattern, I'm gonna go ahead and color in my heart. But that's just my little signature. So you can make up your own. You can sign it if you want to, just with a regular signature. But that's how I sign all mine. So one of these days when I finish this, uh, maybe I'll be able to share it with you. I hope that you've had a wonderful time today. And I hope that you have found some peace in making this drawing. And as you move forward throughout your day, your week, that you're able to work on it more and you have a good time. Join me again.